uh, auto accidents. Um, and, and for every, there's like a million people that die, there's, there's 10 million people roughly that are seriously like permanently injured. Um, and, um, and, 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 and so it matters that we, you know, if, if, if we can get that um, down by an order of magnitude, you know, there's like 900,000 lives saved per year, maybe 9 million severe injuries prevented per year. Um, and so that, that really, I think, morally has to be our primary goal. Um, and um, I, I guess I'm open to uh, an interview on, on FSD. Um, two hours is a long time, but... <laughs> um, okay, okay. Um, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll do an interview. It's got to be on Twitter, but sure. <laughs> all right. Hi. Hi, Elon. I'm Josh Phillips, long-term retail investor. My question is about uh, battery-grade lithium supply in the next 10 years. Um, you know, lithium experts all agree that mines are just not coming on online fast enough uh, to meet battery supply. And actually, Drew Baglino pointed this out recently. Some mines take 10 years plus to be permitted. And even GM has actually announced like huge lithium deals that will like secure away supply from the rest of the industry. So what's Tesla's plans to get more supply of lithium uh, at, at the mine level outside of refining, uh, but also uh, at a deeper level than a traditional offtake? Because as we know, he who controls the spice controls the universe. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, so um, I, I actually think that the the, the industry analysis is, is incorrect, um, and the, the, the constraint is fundamentally that of processing. Um, so, um, now our refinery in Corpus Christi that we're building is, um, you know, primarily oriented towards refining spodumene, um, of which there is a truly vast amount in the world. Um, about, I think about three quarters of our lithium comes from Australia. Um, and frankly, you could increase the rate at which the mines are operating, um, and the limiting factor is, uh, is, is, is not how fast can you mine, but how fast can you, can you process. So the, 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 the mines are only going to produce ore at the rate at which refineries can handle the ore, or it's pointless. So um, I, I think my opinion, and obviously I, I could, could be wrong about this, but it, is, is that it's, it's really not, not about the lithium ore. Lithium is extremely common. Lithium is everywhere. In every, every country has got lithium. It's, it's not like oil. So lithium is one of the most common elements on Earth. Um, but taking the lithium ore and refining it to battery grade is extremely difficult because the purity levels required for a battery are extremely high. If you have even a small impurity, then uh, you will degrade the life of the cell dramatically. So you need ultra-pure uh, battery uh, grade lithium, and that's why that's why our focus is on refining as opposed to, to mining. Thank you. Hi, Elon. Uh, thanks. It's a great time here. Uh, you spoke about safety in your presentation of the vehicles. And I just want to say uh, I'm thankful to you for building such a safe vehicle because I'm here today with my son. Uh, we drove in his Tesla 3 over here. Uh, that he replaced with the one that he got rear-ended significantly in, and it destroyed the car. Uh, but we're able to be here today, so right. thank you very much. Absolutely. So, what's your way to look? <laughs> there? Okay. Hey, uh, how's it going? My name's Austin Gregory. Um, I'll ask about this because I don't think it gets near enough love. I was wondering if there are any updates on the next gen Roadster, actually. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. I know it's sort of like the cherry on top and uh, all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. You guys have a lot of a lot on your plate, as you said before. But if there's any updates on like the release timeline, all that stuff, the SpaceX package, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, that'd be amazing. Thanks. Uh, to totally uh, fair and reasonable question. Um, but where is that thing? Um, <laughs> um, so uh, we expect to complete. Uh, the engineering and design of the next-gen uh, Tesla Roadster this year, um, and hopefully, start, hopefully uh, start production. This is not a commitment, but hopefully start production next year. So, um, but I, I, it, it, it is like it, it is like as you alluded to. It's 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 not even the icing on the cake. 
it's the cherry on the icing on the cake. Um, so I, would, I wouldn't expect it to be like, uh, it's definitely not going to be a huge contributor to, to revenue. It, it will be a modest contributor to profitability, but it will be sick. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, um, you know, there's some value to me uh, running two companies because uh, the, it, the, the next gen roadster will have the SpaceX option package. So, that, and that, that'll make it truly next level. So. Hey, Elon. Eva McMillan here. First of all, I want to thank you for uh, making the absolute best, safest, and most fun cars in the whole world. Cars in, in Florida, you could, we are seeing many, many more cars in Florida than a year ago. Yeah. Matter of fact, cars are doubled. So um, the question is, we all want Tesla insurance. Oh, is yeah, it yeah. coming? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, that's a great question. Uh, okay, let us, uh, Zach, Zach, Zach says it's coming later this year. But, uh, but I have to tell you, like, the, one of the thorniest things uh, in, in the United States is car insurance, uh, or insurance in general, because it's a state by state, uh, and every state's got different rules and regulations. Um, so that, that's why it's not like rolled out uh, nationwide. I think really there should be one national standard for insurance, especially car insurance. Uh, I think it would improve the uh, cost, effective, cost effectiveness of, of car insurance. Uh, but, our, but our intent is to, to roll out nationwide and ultimately internationally. Um, um, but there is a staggering amount of paperwork that is, that is needed uh, to, uh, to, to get it done. But as, as Zach said, uh, we expect to offer uh, Tesla insurance in, uh, in Florida later this year. Thank you. Thank you, Elon. Thank you, Elon. Alexandra Mertz. I am Tesla Boomer Mama. Very happy to be here. Um, so very grateful to the Tesla team and you, of course. Just want you to know we love the emotions every day, joy and less joy, but we're there. Shareholders, it's not easy. We're here, not because it's easy, but because it's hard. So my question initially was on in-house financing. You already answered that, and I want to congratulate you to the double investment grade rating. But then I asked my Twitter subscribers, I'm sure you're going to appreciate, what they wanted to bring forward, sure. and that question made the cut. Here we go. Automotive, including SAS, peak margin, the same for energy. What number, and by when do you have the best Elon gas that we get there? So I'm not sure I fully understand the question. So this is the peak margin for automobile, mar for automobile oh, yeah. including SAS, and energy, and by when will we get there? Your guess. I know nobody will sue you. Sorry, what's SAS? Well, service, software as a service. Oh, oh okay. Um, you, you mean FS, self-driving? FSD, yeah, yeah. what's going to be the top automobile margin? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, what, what I was saying earlier is, is, is that um, at the point at which you have uh, a, a truly autonomous vehicle that can drive around with, with no one in it, um, the utility of the vehicle, I, I think, as a rough guess, is probably five times what uh, it, it is today. Because you know, people will drive an average of an hour and a half a day, perhaps, uh, so 10 hours a week. Uh, but if the car is autonomous, it can probably, uh, just, just, just speculation, but it probably can operate for a third of the hours in the week, which would mean 50 or more hours, thus a five-fold increase. But, but the car costs the same. Sure, I understand, but what is going to be the margin for Tesla then? Because you're obviously thinking you're going to sell much more FSD then, right? You may have a system in place of robotaxis. You may have a cut with fleets. So did you do any projections what the automotive peak margin for Tesla could be in two years, five years, and the same for energy? Well, I mean, this is definitely, we're in sort of highly speculative territory here. Um, but, but, but obviously, if, if you've got a, a car that costs the same and, and has, say, I don't know, a 20 or 25 percent margin and, and suddenly is able to be used five times as much, then, then you might have 80 percent margins and the revenue would increase several fold. That's why I say it's the... 
it's probably going to be the biggest asset value uh, step change in, in history of Earth. Uh, yeah. And, 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 it, and energy does not have the energy just simply does not have uh, such an increase in asset utilization. So I would expect energy to be to remain at sort of a 20, 20, 25 percent ish to 30 percent margin. All right. So you said ask the tough question. You're still good, right? Yeah. All right. Cool. First of all, though, as a family man, I just want to say there's a couple of things like a loop for tether of us of a car seat going through the headrest, which would be super helpful. There's a couple other things that would be really nice. The Model Y is the only one you can do that in today. Maybe we could fix that. But when we're thinking about 4680 battery cells, should we be thinking about the efficiency and the performance we're getting today? Or is there some updated timeline path that we could see closer to battery day presented efficiency, performance that we can look to in the future? Um, well, well, I think, first of all, it's really important to expre like, express the difficulty of, you know, like, for Tesla to go from, from nothing to making a battery cell that we aspire to be better than any other battery cell on Earth, even when compared to companies where the only thing they do is make a battery cell, uh, is, is obviously not a trivial exercise. Um, that, that said, uh, we do see a path to, to you know, high, very high energy density and higher energy density and lower costs than, than anything else out there. Um, but, it, but it's a hard path. It's a very hard path. Um, and and no, normally this, it, it would be absurd for companies to attempt such a thing. And no other car company is, is, is really attempting to do anything like this uh, in, in a serious way. So I, I guess technically BYD, because they started out as a battery company. but. Um, yeah, so it's it's a it's a very difficult thing to do, um, but I think we are tracking to success in that regard. So. Hey, Elon. First of all, thank you for undoubtedly making the world a better place for my son to live in. Thank you. How do you say? Uh, once Cybertruck is fully ramped in Austin, what is the target production? And also, there's some rumors that you're thinking about stepping down as CEO, please say it ain't so. <laughs> it ain't so. Uh, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I think Tesla's going to play an important role uh, in, in AI um, and AGI. And uh, I, I think I need to oversee that to make sure it's it's good so because um, that's that's a thorny problem if there ever was one um, you know like uh, I, I think generally people do not um, or very few people even in the AI community do not um, uh, appreciate uh, just how much capability Tesla has in AI um, it's by far the most advanced real-world AI there's no one even close um, and um, reality has the most degrees of freedom. So I, I got to make sure that's good. Um, so, and, and you were saying something? Cybertruck fully ramps. Oh, here yeah. Um, production. So, as I said, you know, we'll start production later this year, we'll start handing over cars later this year. There will be an S curve of production, so it'll be slow at first. And then, and then ramping up. Um, and I guess we'll see what the demand is like. Uh, so I, I mean, I think there's, we're likely to do probably um, a quarter million a year, I think, maybe more. Um, again, very much dependent on, on, on what the demand uh, is like. And, um, and it's, it's, you know, we, we don't just need to ramp up production, but we also need to, to um, improve the, the, the production cost efficiency, so, which is going to be also a very, very hard thing. So, but I'd say it's, you know, a quarter million a year is, is a reasonable guess. Um, and it, it might be 500,000, I, I don't know. But we'll, we'll make as many as people want and can afford um, and, 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 and 
but and then like I said, it's, it's going to be hard to make the, the cost of, uh, affordable because it is a new car, new manufacturing method. So, um, in in the grand scheme of things, relative to the production rate of all the other cars we make, it will be small, um, but but still very cool. Um, yeah, thanks. You know, maybe three more questions. Sure. Thank you. Good day, Mr. Musk. Hello, my name is Delia Archer. And this question aims to address Tesla's efforts in developing skilled workforce, attracting diverse talent, and promoting career opportunities within the company. When I look around, I see a lot of young faces, and I think about internships and apprenticeships for students in high school and beyond. My question is, are there any plans to expand existing partnerships and explore new avenues for collaborations with educational int institutions and nonprofit organizations to attract the next generation and vary career pathways? Um, yeah, actually, we, with, with uh, all of our um, uh, gigafactories, we work with the, the, the local schools, um, actually from the high school level, community college and university. Um, because it's incredibly important to foster the talent for the factories. Um, as you saw from the, the employment numbers, we actually need a lot of people. Even though we've got a lot of automation, we still need a lot of people to operate the factories, um, and it really matters that they have the, the right training. So uh, we're big believers in, in uh, reaching out to uh, educational institutions, uh, and um, because, uh, frankly, it's in our interest to do so. Um, so uh, thank you for asking the question. All right. Elon, Josh Fuller. I had uh, originally thought of asking uh, about uh, the, the fun police and pushing <laughs> back on the boombox and allowing us to screech at people with goats again. But uh, after seeing Optimus, I was inspired to ask, uh, does, has anybody asked Optimus's opinion of, of Mars? And <laughs> does he have a ticket yet? Uh, well, you know, Optimus is not uh, a deep thinker at this point. Um, <laughs> So uh, Optimus is uh, still, you know, figuring out how to do basic stuff. Um, like, it, like it, it, it couldn't make, uh, you know, cook some eggs or something quite yet. Um, it, it, so we need to get Optimus to the point where uh, it has um, reasonable ag agility and can and can do basic things. Um, and um, you know, and we're aiming for it to, to start off doing simple tasks that are sort of boring and re re repetitive um, or, some, or dangerous, uh, basically jobs people don't want to do. <laughs> so that, that's, our, that's our goal, uh, and, and um, I'm confident we'll, we'll achieve that goal. Um, and then uh, we, we've got to figure out how to make it at scale, make sure that the, robots, the robot is safe. Um, I think it's going to be very important to have um, a local means of turning it off. Um, so uh, safety is going to safety is going to be extremely important. Um, I can't emphasize that enough. Um, but but right now uh, it it is not at an intelligence level where it's pondering uh, questions like Mars. Um, but perhaps it will be one day. So. Hi. Good afternoon, Elon. My name is Luke Arsenal. Uh, I just want to start off by saying a big thank you to you and the team of Tesla for all you guys do. Um, it's been great to see, and I'm, I'm so happy for you guys. My question is, with the rise in cybersecurity threats to operational technology and the Internet of Things, what steps is Tesla taking to protect the company itself and its products from these threats? Also, as a suggestion, because I know you like suggestions, for the navigation, do you think we could do something on the UI that adds in when you're about to take the off-ramp to show a picture of that exit? kind of like other map systems do. Um, and then also... Oh, man, my, this is a lot of questions. One of my friends <laughs> wanted to get a shotgun from you, if that's possible. Okay. Um, 